Good morning, everyone, on this glorious Easter Sunday morning. Jesus is alive. Amen. What's that? I didn't hear you very well. Come on. Jesus is alive. Amen. That's much better. <laughs> well, it's all a bit different, isn't it? Staying at home when in our Spanish culture, we just love to get outdoors. And of course, you don't have to smarten up for church. You could watch this in your comfy chair, sip a cup of coffee, or even watch it in your PJs and no one's going to notice. And that's okay, because as the scripture tells us, God doesn't look on the outward, he looks on our hearts. And that's what matters. Well, I wonder, have you been able to fill your time during this period of self-isolation? You know, one thing I've noticed in a couple of articles I've read recently is that in curtailing so many of their usual activities, many people have felt an emptiness inside that they've had, found hard to fill. Suddenly the loss of socialising with friends, having meals out, getting together over a cup of coffee and so on have left a void that they found hard to fill. A bit like those advertisements on the television that promise that by buying a particular product or service, you could be healthier or wealthier or look 10 years younger. <laughs> but you soon realise that they're empty promises. But on this Resurrection Sunday, I want to tell you about three empty things that are full of guaranteed promise. Three empty things that are full of guaranteed promise. Come with me to that first Easter morning. The sun has not yet risen and a few of Jesus' followers, women, are on their way to the tomb where Jesus was buried. The conversation is subdued, the task before them a sad one. They are going to anoint the body of Jesus ready for final burial. And as they come to the top of a rise in the path, I wonder if they can see the three crosses still there. Yesterday was the Sabbath, so nobody had yet removed them. So there they stand, an empty reminder of the horror of that fateful day. As we look, we can just see on the one in the middle the blood stains from where a crown of thorns was crushed onto Jesus' head and where the nails were driven into his hands, from where his back had been severely whipped by the Roman soldiers and where another soldier had ran a spear through his side to make sure he was dead. And he was dead because they didn't take the bodies down until they had died. Here now was an empty cross, proof that Jesus had died, empty of his body, but full, full of God's promise. That's the first guarantee, full of hope for you and for me. After pausing briefly to view the cross, they continue their way down the path to the tomb. And as they go, one of them wonders around, well, well, who will move the stone for us? They have good reason to be concerned. The stone that was placed in front of the tomb was a large boulder, probably weighing upwards of two tons. And not only that, the Romans had sealed it so no one could move it without their permission. Suddenly the women feel a shaking and the earth moves. Frightened, they look at each other, not certain what to do, wondering what was happening. After a few minutes, things seem normal again, so they continue on their way. As they approach the burial site, they are still wondering about what had just happened when they come upon something even more remarkable. The soldiers are all unconscious. The stone has been moved from the entrance and suddenly two angels glowing like lightning are standing beside them. Listen to their words. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Jesus had written. 
He was alive. The tomb was empty. The empty tomb is the truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's the second guaranteed promise to every one of us that we too will be raised to eternal life. To those who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour, death has lost its sting. It is no longer something to be feared. What fear is there when we have the promise that one day we will live forever with him in heaven? The father and son were driving down a country road one afternoon in the springtime when a bee suddenly flew in the car window. Being deathly allergic to bee stings, the boy began to panic as the bee buzzed around inside the car. Seeing the horror on his child's face, the father reached out and caught the bee in his hand. Soon he opened his hand and the bee began to buzz around once again and again the boy began to panic. But the father reached over to his son and opened his hand, showing him the stinger still in his palm. Relax, son, the father said. I took the sting. The bee can't hurt you anymore. Friends, the empty tomb is God's way of saying to us, relax, my child. I took the sting. Death can't hurt you anymore. But, you know, it doesn't end there. There is one more promise I want you to know about Easter. It's the promise of the empty burial clothes. After the angels had spoken to the women, they immediately went back to the apostles and reported what had happened. With this incredible news, Peter and John immediately raced back to the tomb to see for themselves. And when they got there, they found the tomb just the way the women had said it was, empty. But that's not all. Inside, Peter found the clothes that Jesus had been buried in. They too were empty. If someone had stolen his body, they wouldn't have removed the clothes and folded them up neatly and left them where they lay. No, truly Jesus was resurrected from the dead. And it wouldn't be long before Jesus himself would appear to Mary Magdalene and to all the apostles and eventually to over 500 people. He would sit down with them, walk with them, talk with them, eat with them. Once again, they will be able to fellowship with their Lord. And that is the promise of Easter. Jesus is alive and he wants to fellowship with you and with me. He is a living saviour and he desires to have a personal relationship with each one of us, just as he did with his disciples some 2,000 years years ago. Think about that. The cross couldn't hold him. The tomb couldn't contain him. The burial clothes weren't needed for him because Jesus was alive. That first Easter Sunday as the women went to the grave, they no doubt felt a real emptiness inside because they were not yet aware of the wonderful promises of that day. Off in the distance stood an empty cross, the promise that their sins were forgiven. At the end of their journey was an empty tomb, the promise of their eternal life. Inside the tomb were the empty burial clothes, the promise that Jesus was alive. And the empty cross the empty tomb and the empty grave clothes confirm the fullness of God's promise to us. It's a reminder to us that we have been forgiven because Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. God's word tells us in Romans, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
It was on that cross that Jesus Christ offered his perfect, sinless life on behalf of each one of us. No one else, not Moses or Abraham, not David or Isaiah, not Muhammad or Buddha, no one else has ever lived perfectly, then offered his perfect life for our salvation. That is why the Apostle Peter tells us in Acts, there is no other name under heaven by which we can be saved. Just before Jesus died on the cross, he cried out, it is finished. The penalty was paid. Before that fateful Friday, God could open the books and look up each of our names and written in black across them were the words, guilty of sin, guilty of sin. But when Jesus went to the cross, died and conquered death, leaving behind an empty cross, an empty tomb, an empty grave clothes, God transferred our account into his name. And on that day, across the names of those who know and love him, he wrote in Jesus' blood, forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. So friends, whatever this current uncertain situation or the future holds for us, we have the assurance of God's guaranteed promise to us, the empty cross, the empty tomb, the empty grave clothes point us to an assured future in heaven. As the old hymn says, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. May you know the assurance of God's promise of eternal life as we worship and praise him on this resurrection day. Thanks for listening and God bless you.